We're in the Expert Photography office today and I'm going to teach you all about an exposure triangle and how it works. First though, let's talk about aperture, shutter speed and ISO, the three different factors to an exposure. Number one, we have the aperture. This is where the light passes through the lens. Second step is the shutter speed, how much of that light makes it through to the sensor. And the third step is the ISO, how sensitive is that camera's sensor. When you take a photograph, you have all three of these factors in play. So let's say I was taking a photograph on a bright and sunny day. I might have an aperture of f11 and a shutter speed of 1 500th of a second. And probably if I have loads of light, I've probably got an ISO of 100. This is my exposure. However, each of these values on the board here, you'll notice, will either double or halve. These are called stops of exposure, and it's how we measure light in photography. So we'll come back to aperture because that's the most confusing scale, and we'll start over here with shutter speed. It's really simple. So if I take a photo at 1 500th of a second, and if I want to double that exposure, if I want twice as much light in, I need to change the shutter speed to 1 250th of a second. That is one step of exposure. That's twice as much light if I go down to 125th of, 1 250th of a second. The opposite to that would be to go to 1,000th of a second. That's half as much light. So if I go to 1,000th of a second, that is one stop. As I move through these numbers, I'm moving the exposure by one stop of exposure. So I can either double the shutter speed, or I can halve the shutter speed. Double it for less light and halve it for more light. Each of those steps is one stop of exposure. The same is true down here for ISO. If I go from 100 to 200, I'm doubling the sensitivity of my camera's sensor. 200 to 400, I'm doubling it again. That is one, two stops of exposure. And you can go back, of course, you would be going down by one stop and you'd be decreasing the sensitivity. The f-stop scale is a little bit more confusing because you'll notice the numbers go 22, 16, 11, 8, 5.6, 4, 2.8, 2, 1.4, and a little bit further on. These are all doubling and halving the exposure. Now, the scale is a little bit different. The best thing to do is just to memorize this scale. It's very easy to remember. It took me a few weeks, I think, when I was starting out to really just know it off the top of my head, but it helps you to understand how the exposure changes. So I know that if I go from f11 to f16, I'm halving the amount of light. The aperture in my lens that allows the light through is halving in size. And if I go from f11 to f8, I'm doubling the size of the aperture. So as we go from 22, which is a very narrow aperture and not much light at all, and we open it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stops, we're getting more and more light into the lens. So f22 to 16, that's two times as much. Four times, eight, 16, 32, 64, and so on and so forth. So you can see f2.8 is 64 times as much light as f22. These are stops of exposure, and as you change them, you will change the exposure. So why does that matter in exposure triangle? So let's say that this is a perfect exposure. I'm taking something in bright daylight and it's set to f11, but perhaps I want more depth of field. I know that for more depth of field I'm going to need a narrower aperture. So let's say I change it to f16. My aperture has now narrowed and that means I have half as much light in this exposure as I used to have. So this previously well exposed photograph is now underexposed by one stop. So what do we do? We can leave the photo underexposed, but that's not the best choice. What we can do instead, you can go to the ISO or the shutter speed and add a stop of light. So I could change the shutter speed from 1 500th of a second to 1 250th of a second. That's doubling the amount of light that comes into the camera, and that will even up the exposure. Or I could change it from 100 ISO to 200 ISO and it's doubling the sensitivity of my camera sensor and that means that I'm going to make up that exposure. So I could change it to 
1 250th of a second and I could change it to ISO 200, if I did both of those, well now I'm going to be one stop overexposed. I have too much light now because I've added two stops when I only removed one. So what you could do then is go from F16 to F22 and you'll have a good exposure again. So this is the exposure triangle. The reason we use a triangle is because no matter how you shape, make a shape of this, tr of this triangle, you're going to have the same values inside here. And what that means is if you remember high school mathematics, you'll remember that the angles inside a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. They always add up to one well-exposed photograph. If you change some of these values, let's say I want more light into my aperture, then something here has to move. These angles have to adjust accordingly to make the same exposure. So let's see what that looks like here. Here's something I made earlier. So I've got a couple different triangles up here. And we can see the aperture value here is huge. That means that my aperture is really wide. Maybe it's at 1.4. And at 1.4, I have so much light coming into my camera that I only need a really small shutter speed value. So it's a very small amount of light. That might be 1 2,000th of a second and a very low ISO. This might just be 100 ISO. Let's have a look at this second triangle now. We can see that the largest section here is the shutter speed. That means we want lots of light into our camera with a longer shutter speed. And because we've got lots of light from the shutter speed, we don't need as much from the ISO, can this, so this can be a lower ISO, and we don't need as much light through the aperture either, so this could be a much narrower aperture. So instead of saying 1.4 and 1 2,000th of a second and 100th, this might be 1 60th of a second, aperture of 5.6 and an ISO of 400. So as you prioritize different aspects of your exposure, different parts of your, of your triangle are going to move. So priority here is shutter speed and priority here is aperture. When you set that, that priority, the other factors that make up an exposure will change. That's how an exposure triangle works. The last thing I want to touch on is why would you prioritize shutter speed and why would you prioritize aperture? Well, shutter speed is for fast moving objects or for very low light conditions. So let's say I'm doing some sports photography or I'm doing some bird photography. I know that whatever I'm taking a photo of is moving very fast. I need to capture that motion. So I would set my priority to shutter speed. Maybe I set it to one two thousandth of a second. And because of that, I know I'm going to need a wide aperture. Let's say I'm doing landscape photography. I know that I'm going to want a narrow aperture. I want a deep depth of field. So I set this, and I'd probably use a tripod so I could set the shutter speed to one thirtieth of a second. Or it, conversely, maybe I'm doing portrait photography and I want to blur the background of my subject. So I'm going to set it to f2.8. And because of that, I need a faster shutter speed. Whatever you're shooting, just remember, if you make one adjustment to a well-shot photograph, or a well-exposed photograph rather, you need to make an adjustment somewhere else. If I change the aperture, I need to change the shutter speed or the ISO. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing. We're posting new videos every Monday at 12 p.m. London time every single week of the year. Go ahead and check out the links below as well, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.